Hello, this is Pastor Jay with 431 Global Ministries with today's devotional prayer. Today's devotional prayer is taken from the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah was from the tribe of Simeon. Uh, he was of royal blood. He was a descendant of King Hezekiah. He lived in Jerusalem. And he was right there in Judah seeing all the bad things that was happening as a result of Manasseh's reign. Uh, Manasseh had partnered up with the Assyrian lords and had brought in uh, paganism, had, had brought in bell worship, had brought in worship of the stars. He even brought in the sacrificing uh, children to the false gods. Now, as that, it seems so deplorable and almost impossible to imagine those very practices are still existing today. Uh, it's, it's basically done as sacrifices to the devil. And that's what Israel had become involved in. Uh, it was very deplorable. It was very, very sad times to be living, especially if you were a devout Israelite and you knew what used to be and was seeing what was now. Some of our old timers in the church remember the old days and they see what's in the church now and they may have a feel for what the what Zephaniah and many of these other Israelites felt. But fortunately, Manasseh repented right before he died. He repented and he began to reform Israel. But then he died. And his son Ammon came in who did not want to follow after uh, the, the truth of, of, of what his father had started. So he went right back into that evil and wickedness and it was just a couple of years, he, he died, he was all, all out of the scene, and then little Josiah became, began to, to reign as king, eight years of age. And Josiah, no doubt, he had to have the Holy Spirit because he, even as a young boy, saw the need for Israel to go back to her God. And so he had good advisors who advised him well, and by the time Josiah was almost 21 years of age, Zephaniah entered the scene. He was called by God to prophesy, to prophesy about the good things that was getting ready to befall Israel because Josiah was doing right, but also to prophesy the judgment that Israel was going to uh, fall under Babylon because of all those years of missing the Sabbaths and all those years of, of wickedness. They still had to pay for that. And so Zephaniah came forward and, and and it was it was just very good music to the ears of those of those true Israelites to to see a king who was truly reforming Israel and to hear a prophet who was showing the holiness of God and, and and really bringing forward the truth. So that's the time period that we're 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 referring to here. Zephaniah is a powerful book. And certainly as we get into, to, into today's scripture, we're going to see a parallel with what we may be experiencing and how we may be feeling right now amidst this pandemic that we are in. Notice Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 18 through 20. I will remove from you all who mourn over the loss of your appointed festivals, which is a burden and reproach for you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame. I will gather the exiles. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they have suffered shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. Note our prayer. Our Father in heaven, those were refreshing words to a people who were totally dismayed over losing everything they knew and everything they stood for. They sustained these losses because of their disobedience to you. Your people of old valued their sacred assemblies. They looked forward to gather at their festivals, and when they lost their privilege, it became a reproach and a burden. But you made the ones who, who were made sorrowful to be able to rejoice. Yes, even today, many of us who sow in tears reap in joy. 
Zion did have many calamities. The city was ruined, the palaces were demolished, trade was at an end, and the administration of public justice had ceased. But still, as these were nothing to them in comparison with the ending of their solemn feast. All of these, no doubt, made them very sorrowful. Father, today, churches around the world have been restricted. The assembling together has been made difficult, as some have have even been harassed even for the alternative ways they have tried to meet. Not to mention the isolation. It has been very hard and difficult for your people. There are areas that have been under restrictions for many years as the gospel work has been banned in these areas. But despite this, and even despite what we are going through in this pandemic, the gospel continues to grow and increase all to your glory. We know that Satan and his instruments, having a particular spite at the church, has also, in addition to persecution and disregard, have placed odious characters into our various assemblies and caused a burden that has brought reproach not only to your church, but also to Jesus our Lord. Yes, they reckon that the reproaches of those who reproach the solemn assemblies fall upon them, fall foul upon them. But as you did to Israel of old, as stated here, our enemies shall be disabled and no longer keep us in bondage. Yes, Father, you make that which is considerable, considered despicable as though it is honorable, as those that reproach the church shall be made to respect her, Praise and fame shall be hers in every land. Their shame shall turn to respect. Those that said, this is Zion whom no man looks after, shall say, this is Zion whom the great God looks after. And she that was looked upon to be the offscurring of, of the earth now appears to be the darling of heaven. Yes, those wonderful things happened to your first church, the Jews. They came out of, of, of the bondage that they were under, and they, they were glorified. But of course, we know they ultimately came to your disfavor when they brought our Lord to his end, and they rejected him. But even more so, these wonderful things that Zephaniah prophesied to Israel of old we see an application to your church today when all the saints shall be brought together to Christ that he may be admired and glorified in them and they admired and glorified in him before angels and men. Then will your church be made a name and a praise to eternity. Father, remind us of these precious promises today. In the gloom of the world's conditions and the restrictions that have befallen your people, and as an antichrist force has used a pandemic to gain control over religious liberties, financial liberties, and even health liberties, may we know that our enemies will not have the last say. May we know that you will rescue and that you will restore. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yes, this is so true. There's many people who look at everything that's happening and there's been a lot of speculation. There's, there's been a lot of people who have said that the reason that we are befalling this is because here in America, America has allowed all the evilness and the sinfulness to be legalized and continued. And there, there is possibility that we may have lost a shield of protection uh, because of disregarding uh, God's law regarding life, God's law regarding um, uh, morals. Uh, there's a lot of, of people in America a lot of people with power in America who are doing exactly what uh, Israel was doing 
they're involved in child sacrifice. So there is a possibility that here in America and around the world, we lost our shield, we lost our protection, and now we're suffering the consequences of there being an antichrist tyrannical spirit who's now going to try to control every aspect of our life. It is possible. But either way, either way, those of us who are awake, those of us who are preaching and and administering the truth to others, those of us who are going forward and who are being, uh, standing in the gap and being a light in a dark world, we still have reason to hope. We have reason to hope that these forces will not succeed to their ultimate plan of world domination. We have the hope that our master will come back and that these things will be brought to a completion, that they will not succeed in depopulating the entire world and only having an elite few to have their all the riches and all of the, the beauty and all of the splendor of the world. That's not the plan of God. Yes, there's going to be splendor and glory brought to this world, but it's going to be enjoyed not by evil, antichrist, tyrannical people, but it's going to be enjoyed by those who have chosen to follow the master. We will prevail. We will overcome. Now, what happens before all of this, we don't know. Whether our natural life will end before all of this comes into place, we don't know. But we do know one thing. We will, if we're still here, as this comes to a completion, we will be gathered to our home. There will come to be an abundance of, of God's promises brought forward. He will be glorified, and those who are on his side will receive that glory as well. We do know that. And so that's my prayer for each of us as we experience everything that we're experiencing. Some of us are experiencing financial loss right now. Some of us, uh, many of our brothers and sisters around the world are starving to death right now. And it's our prayer that God will miraculously make a provision for them. That's our prayer that we will be taken care of. It may not be everything we want, but we'll be taken care of. Some of us may not be experiencing a financial loss or, or food loss, but we're experiencing right now a mental anguish over what's going on and the number of lives that have been, uh, you know, that, that have ended as a result of this, of this. And I'm not talking about a virus killing people. I'm talking about the results. There's been more that have died from the results of how we have reacted to this. Like I said, 30 million already are in starvation the United Nations are projecting 130 million, all because of this pandemic. That's a lot of souls. It's a lot of lives. And many of those are our brothers and sisters. So yes, there's a lot out here that we have to think about that we could be in mental anguish over. Uh, with that comes depression. With that comes all kinds of other issues, spiritual weaknesses that now may be coming into play. We have to stay strong. We cannot allow the enemy to gain control. Stay strong, brothers and sisters. Stay strong in your determination to have hope and faith that we will overcome. And when we receive that glory that has been promised to us, every vestige, every part of all this that we had to live in will be forgotten. I pray that we will be there. I even pray that these evil, antichrist, tyrannical uh, individuals that want this power, I even pray that they repent and come to Jesus. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. 
Perhaps they do know what they're doing. Perhaps they're being the devil's aid right now. I, I don't know who am I to judge. But I do know one thing. We have a hope. And we have reasons to rejoice in that hope. May God bless each and every one of you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. But stay in that word. God bless you.